The views expressed in the following program do not necessarily represent the views of this station or its management. Real People, Real Life is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Welcome back once again. Real People, Real Life, Wichita, Kansas, America. 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 Okay, well, normally I would ask everybody how their weekend is, but we'll get to that in a minute. How's that? Oh, okay. Is that I'm okay? I know, I know. You got a lot to tell me about. <laughs> everybody I know, had a I know. Full I know. We were talking on last week's show um, that we do have um, a hint bill up in mm-hmm. Topeka. I did go last week. Okay. I, I, I was there for multiple reasons. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we do have uh, Senate Bill Number Nine that is being presented presented by Senator Haley. Here's a copy of that one. Okay. Then we also have the one that Gail Finney, Representative um, Gail Finney, yeah. is doing, and that will be House Bill Number Two Thousand and Eleven. Is the and House Bill similar to a House Cat, just different? Pretty much. Um, <laughs> so we do have two, you know, um, cannabis bills currently. Sure um, being looked at in Topeka. Um, there was a rally last week. I did attend that. Uh, it was a lot of great supporters. I think there was a lot of great information shared. Mm-hmm. There, there obviously, you know, there was, um, Gail was talking and of course, you know, Haley was talking. There was some pretty good representation. Mm-hmm. You know, I did misspeak in last week's show, so I wanna clarify that right now, oh. right off the bat. Um, I was under the impression, on a, and I did state that I have not had a chance to get my eyes on yeah. these yet. I had thought that Senator Haley's bill, the Senate bill, SB9, was a little bit more. And actually, um, they're both kind of the same, mm-hmm. where it's pretty limited to a medical. Just medical? Cannabis yeah. opportunity. So I wanted to clarify that, okay? Um, also, while I was there, there was a couple other um, bills that, that things are being looked at. And of course, you know me, I was trying to find Mr. Brown Poop, but he One there? Oh. I couldn't find that boy nowhere. Huh. Anyway, um, but I think we all know now how he's trying to raise the syntax, you know, the quote unquote syntax yeah. to increase. It's it, to me, it's selective taxation. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I can't, I can't handle that. It really irks me to no end. So let's have this selective taxation because we are in a world of doo doo, okay, um, as far as our state budget. So yeah. what they want to do is increase the syntax, okay? Syntax would be on like on alcohol, um, tobacco products. Every state surrounding Kansas has lower taxes than we do, mm-hmm. okay? Especially on, on, on tobacco and soon to be on alcohol, okay? So just like what we have going on now, okay, we have people that may be going to. Colorado, maybe they're going to California. Some people might even be going to Washington State. They're mm-hmm. going wherever to buy uh, cannabis, you know, mm-hmm. medical grade cannabis. I'm not talking ditch weed kids. I'm mm-hmm. talking medical, medical grade cannabis. And they're bringing it back. And so we've got this little black market going on where people are selling it on the street. They're selling mm-hmm. it. Yeah, but you know. they were already selling. Well, we know this, it, right? They on were. The street. Correct, correct. Before that, this is just a new supply. supply. It's, it's not coming from Mexico, it's, now it's coming from Colorado. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Well, but Colorado is a heck of a lot better, quite frankly, than Mexico. But anyway, <laughs> that's just my personal opinion. I have it's no GMO way. GMO cannabis. <laughs> I know it's GMO <laughs> cannabis. <laughs> but that but I don't think that that is a good solution mm. to our state's woes. Um, <laughs> to add, you know, a selective tax. So, and then Brownback has done some extremely ridiculous things, you know. And, and each week we're going to keep bringing those out and talking. Uh, each about week them. we keep hearing about the effects Every of it. Every day, and we keep seeing everywhere the you effects. go. Everywhere, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the same pattern that we've seen over and over again with other states. California was the first state to pass a smoking ban. <coughs> <coughs> they lost thirty percent of their bar business. And then exactly. when they no longer had the revenue from the alcohol sales. They turn around and raise alcohol and tobacco taxes trying to compensate for it, which further runs more clubs out of business. Correct. It's the same thing we see with minimum wage. Uh, they've raised the minimum wage to the point the dollar is worthless. Now we've got a higher tax on a higher minimum wage, and they can't pay the bills, where before when we had a lower tax on a lower minimum wage, they could. Right. They keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result when we already have in history what worked. Mm-hmm. 
Correct, correct. And it, there's no party involved with it. It's all stupidity in government. Right. So, so when I was in Topeka, in addition to, you know, the, the two cannabis um, options, the hemp mm -hmm. option, um, there's another thing that they're wanting to do, um, and that is to uh, allow, right now, they're talking about allowing strong beer, okay, and wine in your local grocery stores, convenience stores, you know, the giant Wally Worlds and all yeah. this good stuff, okay? Um, I, I want you guys to bear with me and think about this for just a minute here. The, I pulled this on January 14th of 2015, okay? What this is here, okay, is a signed ABC enforcement agent's contact list, okay? This shows me every alcohol beverage control agent and their cell phone number, quite frankly, uh, matter of public record, um, and what counties they have to serve, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I just want you to understand this, okay, and, and work with me here. It, just because suddenly, okay, we're going to be able to pick up our strong beer or our wine, if that's what we choose to do, at convenience stores, grocery mm -hmm. stores, super giant, right. giant stores. That does not mean that suddenly we're gonna, people are going to go, oh my gosh, I think I'm going to start drinking beer. Okay, so it's not going to increase the number of people consuming said products. Okay, mm -hmm. but but the the businesses that have to deliver the product, okay, whether it be beer or wine, they are not set up with enough trucks and enough people to take on that many more locations. See, okay? but that implies jobs. So and I don't necessarily hang on. agree with that. So the cost of said products, in order to cover the additional costs mm -hmm. for more trucks and, more and all yeah. that, the cost of the products will now increase. Okay? Now if we add a special increase, a special syntax, now we got folks <clears throat> running again to every uh -huh. state around us and buying They'll, they'll all pool booze. their money. Oh, yeah. You okay. know, I mean, they won't even have to pool their money. They'll take their own money and go across the border and get yeah. it somewhere else. Right, right. History uh, might argue with that. Uh, well, okay. Uh, back well, I mean, to they'll still well, be the general uh, public that uh, will, of course, uh, Joplin, pay. Missouri used to get a lot of southeast uh, Kansas right. business Correct. on Sundays. Right, for exactly. Raymond, Oklahoma is a hot spot for When California for shifted mm -hmm. from a liquor store only, uh, again, I can go back to California, when they shifted mm -hmm. from liquor store only, and allowed grocery stores and convenience stores to car start carrying hard liquor. The overall price of liquor dropped across the board. Now, the fear was at that time most of the liquor stores were going to fail because they couldn't compete with the big grocery chains. And there was a, a certain amount a of liquor stores yeah. that did. Uh, however, anybody that's driven through L.A. knows that liquor stores are alive and well, even though you can uh -huh. still buy it in a grocery store. So Thank it's you. not a foregone conclusion that this is necessarily <coughs> a bad thing. Okay, well... Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you got to think look about at, like, when you're the, drinking, the, you can't drive, so they're going to go to the closest place anyway. Uh, let's just look at the fact that in Sedgwick County, you can't okay, drive. we have four <laughs> ABC agents, four, okay, to to monitor. And Christine's story is the best one. Yes, she is. Yes, we have. She's my favorite. We have Story, as it Morel, <laughs> Garmin, <laughs> and Faye are the four that we have for Sedgwick County. Mm -hmm. So we have four. Uh, okay. Others don't matter. It's just Christine's story. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard a lot of good things about that one. But anyway, um, have you seen that girl? No. I mean, no. from a male perspective. Really? She's oh, she's fashion model quality. Oh, <laughs> she's got a fun job then. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I just, I just, I, you know, my, my guess, my question is, um, is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? I, I'm just becoming more and more on less regulation because I'm getting kind of regulated to death. But anyway. So this is going on. We've got cannabis, hemp. We got you know alcohol. We got the syntax. You know, and it's just like Are enough. Are they going to sell the cannabis and hemp in Walmart too? I oh, think eventually. You know, eventually, listen, I think eventually. Wally so Wally, Wally, Wally weed. Wally weed. <laughs> What's a natural? Well, if, if Wally it. weed would be next to the Wally beer, I, it's one shot stop. A one shot. Well, no. Here's why I say yes. Probably because they sell cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Marble has a whole line of product and, now. And so so why wouldn't they just add hey, another little yeah. section? But that's once it goes recreational. Blunts, you know. Right, right. Acapulco Gold. I mean, Cheech and Chong were talking about that back in 71. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> God, I love Cheech and Chong. Yeah. So we're diving into these bills. We're diving into this. We're diving into the crazy insanity that our governor continues to do, you know. And then we bring this back down to a local level. Um, and, okay, I will only show you this part of it. Okay. Um, like City of Wichita. Wichita. 
Office of Central Inspection. My favorite people. Your favorite <laughs> people. Um, boy, am I working on some seriously good stuff with that deal. Okay. <clears throat> And as we I know, I don't know how many suicides that office is in, is responsible for. Well, we'll be finding out. And um, I think th I think that mm. uh, what I think what we're trying to work towards myself and a few others are are we're going to try to get a certain judge recused um, on some cases. Heads up. Okay, I knew you might like that. And um, oh. so as we keep moving forward, you know, what's coming up on the 27th? I know most of the judges. I do. On the agree. 27th is the last day to file for your spring elections. Mm -hmm. That would be school board, county commission, or county council, city council. City. Duh. Mm -hmm. City council, and then mayor's race. Right, right. Three so important races. So that's pretty quick. You know, you're, yeah. you're, if you want to get out there and... and <laughs> Run. run for office you know you've got until the 27th fire too. the entire scroll board and uh, let's scroll let's I saw that. Yeah. our scroll system that was funny. because we're tired of screwing our kids thank you yeah. i god i love this you know so tis the season once again here we go you yeah. know um we're gonna have a gentleman joining us here in a little bit that i've met um anthony mitchell he's gonna be running for city district number two mm -hmm. um i can't wait to get him in here and kind of talk to him a little bit and as the next several weeks play out and pan out you know we will be allowing time you know for different candidates if they would like to come on absolutely um, bring they on. Will, you know come per fcc down. rules we got to bring him in yeah. anyway we've got a ton of guests uh coming in thanks to fasa on yeah, our topic this week which is autism yeah. mm -hmm. okay and i know that we have a lot of people out there waiting to see what we can do so we'll be right back real people real life do -do -do -do. real people real life is brought to you by these fine sponsors Hammond Liquor, home of the coldest beer in town and the lowest prices store-wide. For all your special events, your friends at Hammond Liquor have what you need from beer, wines, spirits, champagne, and more. Open till 8 p.m. every Sunday, Hammond Liquor, West Kellogg and Tyler Road. Hammond Liquor, home of the coldest beer in town and lowest prices store-wide, wants to remind you of very important savings days. Wine day, Tuesdays get 20% off. Beer day, Wednesdays get 10% off. Microbrews and imports. Open till 8 p.m. every Sunday, Hammond Liquor, West Kellogg and Tyler Road. Credit King Auto Sales, the biggest buy here, pay here in Kansas. The King's Corner, 31st Street South and Broadway. The King knows you worked hard for your tax refund. The King will give you more for it. The King of buy here, pay here. The King of low down payments. Bad credit, no credit, no problem with the King. The King does it better than all the rest. GoCreditKing.com. Knapp Weaponry is the home of Wichita's newest indoor temperature controlled shooting range. Mention this ad for two for one pricing weekdays from noon to four. Knapp Weaponry is an NRA Business Alliance member that offers NRA and state certified instruction classes, training, and women's unarmed self defense classes. We buy and sell new and used guns and offer gunsmith services. Knapp Weaponry offers a free range session with the purchase of a new gun. We also offer transfer services and an array of ammo. Knapp Weaponry, the West Side's best kept secret. Hi, I'm Samantha. And I'm Mike. I'm Domingo. With Economy Motors. Tax time is right around the corner and we're here ready to help you with your transportation needs. We offer a wide variety of quality vehicles priced $12,995 and under with easy approval and easy terms. Bad credit, no credit, no worries. Your job is your credit at Economy Motors. 2305 South Broadway, where we've got your back. Economy Motors! At Economy Motors, we got your back.
Welcome back to Real People, Real Life. Uh, we have a huge guest lineup, so we're going to get right to it. I'm going to start here with David. I'm going to have you introduce yourself. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay, I am David Samuel Westbrook, age 16, and I can, and I have autism. Thank you for coming today, David. Thank you. I'm Samantha Westbrook. I'm David's mom. And I put up with him as best as I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name's Emily Westbrook. I am 13, and I'm David's sister. Thank you for coming, you guys. I'm Sherry Fallis, and I'm the grandmother, live-in grandmother of a 13-year-old with autism. Thank you for coming. I'm Jen Brockman, and this is my mom, and my youngest daughter, who's 13, has autism. My name is Erin Worry. I'm 21 years old, and... I have autism. And I'm Dawn. You guys know Dawn or other host. <laughs> okay, well, today we're going to cover a couple issues, okay? When I say a couple, I mean quite a few because there's so many different topics tied into autism. Number one, I would like to know what it's like for you, a teenager, living with autism. It doesn't really bother me all that often. Do you have a, a lot of, a huge social life? Mm, not really. I'm mostly in video games. You like video games a lot? Yeah, so is my, well he don't really like video games, but he tries to like them. <laughs> you know, he does the autism apps and stuff that are helping him with his speech. What are some of the things that you found difficult? Like, you know, having to go to school and stuff like that, like did you have any troubles there? Not much. You're probably really brilliant actually, like I've found that, you know, children with autism, there's a misperception of their being not really intelligent and it actually is the exact opposite mm -hmm. they're usually extremely intelligent and and they usually have like a couple things that they really obsess on what do you obsess on video games video yeah, games what are you, what are you really good at in school but i'm actually pretty good at math high mm -hmm. five that's my thing i love math that's, totally that's jealous like over here yeah, yeah. i mean totally jealous. Struggle. Too. <laughs> you what on his algebra too. Are you College see level. see what I'm saying here? Brilliant. So you're gonna start inventing stuff right right away. Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Tell him what you want to be. I want to be a video game designer. Ooh. See? Oh yeah. Yes. You know what? Since I know you, can I get hooked up? Because my little boy really likes video games. <laughs> so when you start designing them, we'll be like your um, test subjects. Okay. To see how they go. Excellent. Wait, my Keep seven year old too. <laughs> yes. She also has a seven year old. She parents an autistic child. Um, so we're gonna move on to your mom. Um, so you said you're the one that puts up with him. I do. So I, tell me a little bit about parenting an autistic child. Kind of different child. than what he says, you know. He says he can go through school just fine, but he's kinda like his shirt, he's in his own little world. He doesn't really realize that people make fun of him. Or he doesn't, he just kind of is like, haha, it's a joke. You know? I don't think they care. I don't yeah, think they don't care, and that's the problem. And he has never, not once, been invited to a birthday party. Ever. He's never been to a sleepover. He's had co kids come over and have a sleepover. He's 16 years old. He should have, at some point in his childhood, been invited. Birth, yeah, been invited to a birthday party or, you know, been Does he have to any a close friends? That's the thing. He finds friends with kids that are younger than him and they have to have something in common with him like there's um, her boyfriend's little brother Clay. Is the, yeah Clay is so close with David they play together they do everything together and they get each other the only way I can get these two to play together nicely <laughs> is through a computer game Wizard 101 and they talk to each other and they play through an animated world and they get along really well. You but said just, nicely. <laughs> yes, nicely. <laughs> we got to have those. Yeah. Which, I, I which ones? Mm, like we won't say it that way because we don't want to point a finger. But <laughs> I'm just going to say right now. You. You're the <laughs> not nice one. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, she's not the nice one. Right, not the nice one. <laughs> you know, she, she's been great. Um, she's been kind of like when we can't be around my son, she's kind of like steps in as the mom, and I, mm. I feel guilty of that sometimes, but she'll step in. I bet you do. And she'll help, you know, like if we have but to go help. out some. Right. But she'll make sure that, okay, it's 9 o'clock, we got to go to bed. 
you know, when they know I they have for keeping everybody in check. And she's like, hey, it's time to eat. It's time to do this or it's time to, you know, she steps in at that point to do that. And I feel bad because now I'm at the point where in two years he's going to go to college. Or I hoped that he goes to college. But Might he's be never... Sooner. Yeah, he's never had to make his own lunch. He's never, I do it for him. I pull out his clothes in the morning, and now I feel that I've now hurt him by doing that for him. I know him. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, but now I've got to teach him that independence because I'm not going to be at college. He's not going to have a para. Okay, you know, that brings me to another question. Okay. Have you found resources to help you with these social issues? Not yet. No, oh. not with colleges because I've talked to colleges. I'm like, do you have somebody who can mentor him? Do you have somebody who can... You know, make sure he gets up out of bed every day to, you know, like either a roommate or something. And the only school that's even talked to me remotely about that is Texas A&M. And we're from Texas, so I started talking to them. And they have a support assistant is what they call it. And they room, they room you together with somebody who will help keep you on track. So he wants to go to WSU because they have an engineering program. Right. So I'm sure there's got to be something that by the time he's ready for college, because with awareness comes change. Yes. Okay. So maybe with even just mentioning this, somebody in the right place will say, you know what? That's a great idea. A mentoring program, you know, because it's it's becoming it's becoming evident that we're going to have to take the steps to incorporate, you know, everybody. And, and this is one of the things. You know, I keep looking at you, and I'm sorry, I'm going to say something that bothers me when people say, you look so normal. And when I, I hate that word, because, but I'm saying, and, and, and because of that, my, my baby, everybody's like, he looks perfectly normal. But the thing is, is, you know, it's not an appearance, okay? It's, it's, it's usually so social, not. emotional, communication skills social. is what it it's is. Emotional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hate the word normal because I do is, too. I would say no healthy. But you're so good looking yeah. is healthy. what I'm saying. So I don't have any worries about you being able to have a social life as far as girlfriends at all. <laughs> uh, I, I would take that back. He just, he has little kicks. You know, like sniffing. He loves. Well, to don't sniff. we all? Oh, so does Julius. I cannot have my hair down around him. He is obsessed with my hair, and so I mean, he literally will get like tangled up in it, like, <laughs> and he's fine with it. Yeah, so that, what you want to smell my hair? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's okay. I smell her hair all the time. I'm used to it. Hairspray. <laughs> but yeah, that's just his only thing. Is he? He just has like little ticks that yeah. kind of like make people kind of like. But not the right person, and trust me and believe that we're going to get to that because there comes this story over here where I have heard that you've been in a year and a half relationship I was at, at before. One point. Yes, I have been. Mm -hmm. You know, and you do not describe yourself tick free. Well, oh my gosh, I have stuff. Um, no, I've got stuff. I do, but here, but, but but I do, and it's interesting listening to you guys and hearing that some of the issues that you have are actually the opposite of mine. Um, like you mentioned that he, like when you're in the social world that he didn't mind so much what other people said, when it very much affected me. Did um, it affect you at this age, or how old are you again, 15? 16. 16? 16. 16, did it affect you at this age? Is this when it started to affect you, or was it much be sooner? Oh my gosh, yeah, it was. I, wa I started being affected when I was nine. I was started being bullied halfway through my fourth grade year, and it was a nightmare. Do you think that that might have something to do with the fact that you're a girl, though? You know, we as women, we are so much more emotional. We mature a little bit faster. I, dis I disagree. I, I had both women and men bully me. It was both sides. In fact, when I was a freshman um, in high school, I was around 14 years old, three months in, um, a brother and sister duo, along with, the, along with a friend of theirs, tried to mow me down in a car. They tried oh to God. run me over. You're kidding. And for no. no reason. I remember hearing about this story, yeah. and for no reason. No reason. I mean, I, I, I knew just disliked just her. Just out of just plain. Just, it was spite. Being, yes. It, it was pure spite. Yes. And it was. Do you have siblings? I do have siblings. I have a lot of siblings. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but mainly the, the one who has kind of spent the most time around me is my twin She's brother, dead. Ryan. That's right, your boy-girl twin. I have boy-girl twins, too. Boy-girl twins for, like, forever. Yeah, um, we're going to take over the world someday. But, um, <laughs> no. It's like Pinky in the brain. <laughs> well, really, I what are feel, we doing today? Right? But taking really, over the world. I feel the most, I feel the most bad for my brother. <laughs> yeah, same thing we do every day. I feel most bad for my brother, though, who had to deal with my autism, even though he always tried to protect Ooh. me, and he always did the best he could for me. But it... it 
he it was a burden issues. that he had to bear. You know yes. what? I'm going to tell you right now. I I feel like you guys are are fortunate. You're the mm-hmm. siblings. Here's why. Before I experienced Julius, I was I have to say that I lived in a little bit more of a selfish world, and perhaps they would too. You would too. Your brother would too. It exposes you to a different perspective, you know, on mm-hmm. everything, including yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so like before, and I know this sounds terrible, but I was guilty of being one of those people that are like, why isn't she doing something about that kid, you know? I'm serious because, you know, we were all raised in that children are to be seen, not heard. You obey, you know, this whole nine yards, okay? Well, this is a very different world, and we're faced with very different issues with our children's uh, children these days. And, and so I don't know if it was karma that got me. <laughs> But I got got, and so now I, I do look at things very differently, and I'm a very different person, and I'm grateful for that exposure to create the person that I am. So I think for you, it builds quite a bit of character. He's already got tons of character. You know what I'm saying? But I think for you, it's going to build an additional amount of character than what you, or you, you just have no idea. And a lot of compassion. Yes. And a lot of empathy. Acceptance. Yes. Perspective. And a lot of unconditional, unfailing love for the world. Yes. And she doesn't know this, but her teachers at school will call me and say she is the most, it doesn't matter. What Biggest brat. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I know. I could tell. She's, she's literally a saint. She is a friend to everybody yes. at her mm-hmm. school. Peer model. If yes. they are in a wheelchair, she doesn't care. You know, it's because so of you what don't she's been see through it. and what yeah, she's, she's endured. she's so empathetic, yeah. mm-hmm. they say. So why don't you tell us a little I, bit about your experience? I was just going to say, is this true? Let's <laughs> let you talk. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I've had times, like a couple years ago, I've had some people like my brother, we don't go to the same schools because we're two years apart. And so now I, some kids are like, oh, my God, did you see that kid David last year? Oh. And he's like, oh, my God, he was such a loser. And then I'm sitting there going, no, you, you're selfish and you don't see things the same way. You see it from people and you see people who are different, who can't think the same way, and you just don't process it the same. And so, like, I'm sitting there standing up. If I see people with autism or any other things like that i stand up for them and i'm their friend even if they just don't have it see and that's what i'm talking about you actually obtained a gift from being exposed mm-hmm. to this situation Beautiful you know gift. and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna touch that subject a little bit more when we come back because we got to take a quick break but we'll be back real people real life see you in a second Real People, Real Life is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Hi, I'm Samantha. And I'm Mike. I'm Domingo. With Economy Motors. Tax time is right around the corner and we're here ready to help you with your transportation needs. We offer a wide variety of quality vehicles priced $12,995 and under with easy approval and easy terms. Bad credit, no credit, no worries. Your job is your credit at Economy Motors, 2305 South Broadway, where we've got your back. Economy Motors! At Economy Motors, we got your back. Knapp Weaponry is the home of Wichita's newest indoor temperature-controlled shooting range. Mention this ad for two-for-one pricing weekdays from noon to four. Knapp Weaponry is an NRA Business Alliance member that offers NRA and state-certified instruction classes, training, and women's unarmed self-defense classes. We buy and sell new and used guns and offer gunsmith services. Knapp Weaponry offers a free range session with the purchase of a new gun. We also offer transfer services and an array of ammo. Knapp Weaponry, the West Side's best...
the King. Credit King Auto Sales. The biggest buy here, pay here in Kansas. The King's Corner, 31st Street South and Broadway. The King knows you worked hard for your tax refund. The King will give you more for it. The King of buy here, pay here. The King of low down payments. Bad credit, no credit, no problem with the King. The King does it better than all the rest. Go CreditKing.com. Hammond Liquor, home of the coldest beer in town and lowest prices store-wide, wants to remind you of very important savings days. Wine Day, Tuesdays get 20% off. Beer Day, Wednesdays get 10% off. Microbrews and imports. Open till 8 p.m. every Sunday. Hammond Liquor, West Kellogg and Tyler Road.